Do you want to even get more from Pi-hole? Looking for other ways to get more information from Pi-hole? Well, stay tuned, and I'm going to show you eight commands you need to know. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about the eight Pi-hole commands you need to know. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now here's what we're going to be covering in this video. The eight pie hole commands you need to know. Pie hole is more important than a GUI, and I'm going to show you why. We're going to show this some status related commands. We'll look at some DNS related commands and then some configuration commands just to be fair and balanced. If you've heard about Pi-hole, you're very familiar with the trusted GUI. And that's something you're, there's a lot you can do in here, but I'm going to show you a few things that you can do from the command line or from an SSH session that are going to be just as, if not more valuable. So let's go ahead and switch over to our session. We'll do first thing is Pi-hole. Dash C. Now, this is what they call the pie hole chronometer. It's going to show you the current load of it, CPU usage, just some basic stats on it, whether or not pie hole is active, and kind of a, a top list of the last sites that have been come to it to get filtered and the client that's talking the most. Now, you can leave it running like this for all if you just want to kind of watch and see, especially if you're testing a new computer or application. But when time comes, you can just do control C and get out. If you just simply want a quick snapshot, then you can do the pi hole dash C dash E, and it will run it once and drive right back out to the command prompt. If you want to have a little different view of what's going on, we can look at pi hole status. And this is simply going to tell you that A, the DNS service is up and running, that it's listing on both IPv4 and IPv6, and then most importantly, that pie hole blocking is enabled. Now, sometimes for testing or when I was troubleshooting a streaming receiver problem, I had to disable pie hole. And then remembered a day or two later that I had disabled it when I went through and looked at the graphs and noticed something didn't look right. So this is a good thing to be able to get that kind of information. For those of us who really want to get under the hood, but aren't maybe programmers in the sense of the word, you can look at something called Pi-hole Debug. And this is going to be a rather chatty diagnostic, but it gives you a very good idea of what's going on. It tells you running processes. You'll especially want to have this available if you need to reach out in the forums or get to the developers to see a problem you're having and this is information that they're going to need to have and so you can upload the log automatically but this is a way where you can help the developers and get some help for yourself at the same time once in a while i've run into a problem where dns just didn't seem to be resolving the way i expect what we can do is do a pi hole tail now normally in the linux world you do some variations of tail but this shows you pretty much in real time what's going on so you could restart the process on your laptop and see because it's showing you the source ip address where the traffic's coming from get a sense if it's a problem in dns resolution or if it's something you're the application on the laptop or desktop is simply not dealing with the way it should when you're setting up that new account for the smart home cloud service or device please get a copy of my smart home device account checklist you see here on the screen this will help make sure that everything gets written down that you entered to get that account created the form will also serve as a backup copy when you get this entered into your password manager app and if you're not already using a password manager app please get one now and get started you will be subscribed to my email list in exchange for the checklist i won't share rent or sell your information to anyone. There are times that DNS may simply need to get an attitude readjustment. It's not resolving the way it should or may say it's resolving, but it's really not. So in that case, if you want to flush things and kind of get it restarted, you can look at doing a pie hole restart DNS. 
So it's restarted it. So if you were having a problem, say heaven forbid your micro SD card was getting full, this would be a way to kind of help maybe figure out where the problem really is. If you're going to be doing updates to Pi-hole, like I talked about in a previous video, this is another good command to know about. We can do Pi-hole dash A dash T. Acts like it didn't do anything, but actually in the current directory I ran it from, which in my case is home Pi, then you see what I've got as I ran this earlier, but I've run it again. So you have a snapshot of a configuration as to when you did it that can be restored back to if you go to settings then teleporter and this is where you can do the restoration process you can also back up the pi from here as well but it never hurts to know how to do things from the command line if you've made some changes to pi hole and restoring from the last configuration backup you had didn't seem to make a difference then what you can do is do pi hole reconfigure. This will actually start the process just like you're bringing it up for the first time. And at this point, it's detecting we've got an existing install, which is good. So we can either do a repair, which is a valid thing to try to do, or reconfigure. Or if we're really sure nothing happened, then we can just sit cancel and go on out. But what we'll do is we'll do a repair and it will run a check to see if everything appears to be okay. And now it's got you back to where hopefully, if you were having problems before, this may take care of the problem for you. If you're running tight for space on your SD card and just really don't want to take the time or don't have the time at this point or don't have the micro SD card of a larger capacity, then what you can do is actually clear the logs. So if we, I want to double check my command here. So it's pihole flush, if you spell flush right. And it takes it just a, uh, few seconds to run. I'm not going to run it actively because what will happen when you do that is it's going to basically wipe out all this information where it shows you how many queries you've had, breaking down which client is generating the traffic. That may be something you have to give up, but I've already run it once today, so I'm, I'm going to hold off, but at least you see what the command is going to do. And it's may not one you need a lot, but is at least nice to have an option. We've gone through just eight of the commands that are available within Pi-hole, and this is just Pi-hole itself. If you have also installed Unbound, as you've seen in some of my other videos, there are a whole nother set of commands that are potentially going to give you different information there, but the, we're covering just Pi-hole at this point, and as you can see by going to the online site, there's quite a treasure trove of other information of information you can get from the command line interface. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.